Much ado has been made about the declining player count of For Honor, the game which apparently has very few, if any, people playing it, if Steam's player counts are to be believed. And sure, those numbers paint a dire picture, but they are also unrepresentative of how the game as a whole is doing, since not only do they not account for the PS4 and Xbox One versions of the game, but they also don't account for the non-Steam PC versions, like the Ubisoft Uplay version, which form a significant portion of the player base. So yes, that news is basically not representative of the truth, and a Ubisoft executive has decided to word that in the best, worst way possible by calling it fake news. The patch is rolling out now over the course of the day. It takes a few hours to get to everybody, the Ubisoft rep said on a recent live stream. We have a lot of players in For Honor, believe it or not, fake news people, we have a lot of players in For Honor to roll it out too. We still don't know when we'll get Cyberpunk 2077. It seems to be a ways off, but at the very least, we now know two of the classes that we'll get to play as in the upcoming RPG. Mike Pondsmith is the guy who created the tabletop RPG that the upcoming video game will be based on, and he's also acting as a consultant on said game. Speaking to Game Reactor, he let slip that journalist and executive are two classes that will remain playable in Cyberpunk 2077, alongside the other unconventional classes that define Cyberpunk to begin with. They're all going to be there, but I can tell you're going to find some surprises about how we've done it and I think you're really going to like it," he said. There's a lot of subtlety going on there. Adam Kisinski, CD Projekt Red's president and co-CEO, and I spent literally like a whole week messing with the ways of implementing that, so you get the most feel for your character. So that sounds good, now if only we could play the game or see it in action. Apparently, rumors were going around about Microsoft's Xbox One X, an upgraded version of the Xbox One which would facilitate 4K gaming, being delayed to Spring 2018. Xbox head Phil Spencer quickly denied the same on Twitter though. Responding to another user, Spencer said that the console was still on track for November 7th, feeling good about that date. Along with the Xbox One X, Microsoft will also be launching open world action title Crackdown 3. It will support the Xbox One X along with Forza Motorsport 7 out in October and past titles like Halo 5 Guardians and Gears of War 4. The Xbox One X will retail for $500 and will fully support all Xbox One titles. Microsoft also promises that games will look better on standard 1080p screens thanks to down sampling. As of now, it's being considered the most powerful console ever by the company. But will that be enough for consumers? We'll find out in November. Windows Central's Jez Corden, well-known Microsoft insider who has been at the forefront of many leaks from within the company previously, including the Xbox One X back when it was called the Scorpio itself, has revealed that the next Xbox console is already under development at Microsoft. According to Corden, the new Xbox is not due to launch anytime soon. Corden reckons a two-year window is too early for it to be launching, meaning the earliest we can expect it is sometime in 2020. He suggests that the new system may be a refresh of the Xbox One X, much like how it was for the original Xbox One, though it is important to note that he hasn't committed to the idea. He also points out that as far as Microsoft is concerned, there are no more generations, meaning a next generation Xbox in the traditional sense of the term may never happen. Corden also dropped an intriguing hint that Xbox boss Phil Spencer has heard and is aware of the feedback Microsoft has received regarding the Xbox first party lineup. Corden didn't say anything more, but the fact that he acknowledged the sentiment at all suggests that there may be a change internally at Microsoft in terms of how it approaches its portfolio of first-party games. If so, we must admit that's what we're most excited about, more than even new Xbox hardware beyond the One X. As usual, this report should be taken with a grain of salt, but Jex has a pretty solid track record. If all of this is true, then we should hopefully start hearing rumblings of the new Xbox by the end of next year. It'll be interesting to see whether it will be able to hold muster to the hypothetical PS5, which, going by common rumors and speculation, will be launching around the same time that the Xbox One X successor might launch. Out of nowhere, Valve Software has released a new patch for Half-Life, its acclaimed first-person shooter on Steam. Considering the game was released in 1998, to see it receive any kind of update is pretty suspicious. As such, the patch relies on fixing issues with the console and other things which modders may need. When you consider that the original game isn't really receiving any kind of mods these days, it's pretty odd as a whole. Nonetheless, crashes that occur when setting custom decals or when quickly changing weapons that are consumable have been resolved among other issues. Check out the patch notes on the screen for yourself. With all the talk of Half-Life 3 and how it's never ever going to happen, especially with the number of writers who have departed the company in recent years, what are your thoughts on this patch? Let us know in the comments below. Insomniac Games' Spider-Man will be out next year for the PlayStation 4, that too within the first half of the year. Even with the impressive gameplay demo showcase at E3 2017, there's still plenty more to know about the game. But some fans are claiming that the game has been graphically downgraded compared to its E3 2016 showing. However, Insomniac have clarified that there was no downgrade. Insomniac Games also talked about how the size of the city compares to Sunset Overdrive setting. 
will it be bigger than, say, The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt? The developer replied, that's not a comparison we can really make. It's several times larger than Sunset City was, though. Finally, with Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy being a success, and with Activision owning Spyro, would a remaster of Spyro Year of the Dragon, which Insomniac developed in 2000, be possible? That's up to Activision, and like Naughty Dog didn't do the Crash port, we probably won't do Spyro ourselves, said the developer. BioWare have been working on Anthem for a long time. A lot longer than you'd think, actually. Recently, in an interview with CBC Radio, BioWare General Manager Aaron Flynn revealed that Anthem has been in development at BioWare for years, and began as an idea as early as five years ago. It's pretty surreal, actually, Flynn said while speaking about how it feels to have finally revealed Anthem. We've been working on it for, as an idea, it's been close to around about five years now. This would seem to suggest that BioWare began working on Anthem as soon as they finished working on Mass Effect 3. It's encouraging to hear that so much time has gone into the development for Anthem, but then again, BioWare spent roughly five years on the development of Mass Effect Andromeda as well, and that was definitely a game that needed more time for polishing. Here's hoping that Anthem will turn out much more polished as a final product when it launches next year for the PS4, Xbox One, and PC. The Zombies mode has been one of the main attractions of the Call of Duty series ever since its unexpected and well-received debut in 2008's World at War. It has returned on several occasions since then, and it's gotten better each time. It will once again be making a return in this year's Call of Duty World War II. And while information on the mode has been lean so far, Sledgehammer Games are now teasing some details. Glenn Schofield, co-founder and boss of Sledgehammer, recently posted an image on his Twitter, teasing the Zombies mode, accompanied with a caption that suggests that details for the mode will be announced on July 20th. Schofield was then asked about the tone and atmosphere of the Zombies mode, to which he said that it will be very dark and twisted, but that it will still be fun as hell. Call of Duty World War II launches on November 3rd for the Xbox One, PS4, and PC. Stay tuned for continued coverage on the game. That'll be it for this video. If you like what we're doing, please go ahead and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.